Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Pop Retro, Pop Retro 1 at Twitter, Pop Retro 1 at Instagram. Visit our Patreon, patreon.com slash pop retro. Today I'd like to uh, talk about another film from Vinegar Syndrome, which is a boutique releasing company, and that film today is Girls School Screamers. Look at that, got a little space off to the side of my head here so I can hold this thing up. Uh, Vinegar Syndrome is an interesting label. I found out about it maybe back in uh, 2014. I think they came out in 2012 or 2013. And I think what drew me to the label was that they were releasing a lot of sort of unknown exploitation and horror movies. And that is what they're still doing today in general. That's their branding. Uh, they've uh, they've grown exponentially since uh, their early beginnings, but it it is interesting. A lot of people, it seems like online, are are starting to get confused about Vinegar Syndrome and what they actually stand for. What they're doing? Are they a horror lab label? Are they horror and exploitation label? Like they said that they were originally. Uh, and the reason I think for some of that confusion is because they've just grown so much. They have even opened up a sister company that is a distributor of a bunch of other labels that don't are not in lockstep with what vinegar syndrome proper is if that makes sense so there are in other words there are these small labels out there that needed dis distribution and so vinegar syndrome created i think it's called ocn distribution just a side company and now there are several labels that they distribute and it seems like a lot of fans a lot of people a lot of collectors uh feel you know they they bunch they bunch all these together as if they're all vinegar syndrome when really they're not they are essentially side labels for this company that this company has nothing to do with the production of the movies or the special features most of the time uh, mainly they're just helping out with i think some of the packaging that those cool artistic slip covers that you see on vinegar syndrome releases you're now seeing on these other releases that they distribute but i think the main mission statement with vinegar syndrome remains and a film like girls school screamers fits directly into that mission statement which is something that you may have seen if you were lucky enough or unlucky enough to have rented this back in the day in the mid 80s or the late 80s at the video store or if you saw it caught it somewhere on cable tv if and when it aired on on cable tv because these were movies that were uh, part of that video store era where you went to the video store you saw something that kind of looked like something you you would have watched at the theater but you'd never heard of it and the box art drew you in and so you rented it and that's how a lot of us saw these movies uh, way back then and since the video store era they've been forgotten in large part except for by hardcore collectors and so some of these lesser known ones such as this one are the things that Vinegar Syndrome specializes in and that's what I appreciate about them it doesn't mean these are good movies if they were great movies and sought after uh, movies, then, you know, they would have had release after release after release, just like the big studio movies, but they don't and they haven't. And so Vinegar Syndrome does a good job of restoring these and going back to the original elements for great high quality restorations, as well as uh, uh, hyping <laughs> these releases for sale. So, and some people don't like that stuff and, uh, and you know, that's fine. That's fine. But I, I just have an appreciation for it, even on, on some of the lesser titles, which I think this one probably is. A lot of people online seem to not like Girls School Screamers. Now, uh, as far as the movie itself goes, uh, Girls School Screamers is about this group of girls from a girl, all girls school, and they're chosen to, to go hang out for a couple days at this mansion which is probably a haunted mansion, of course. And their, their task, their job is to uh, catalog all of the art and all the stuff that is, that is in this mansion. And of course, things start happening, supernatural things start happening, and the body count starts to rise. So you can kind of see it coming. I mean, it's a, there's a formula with a lot of these movies, but that's why a, a lot of us 
loved them growing up too because we kind of knew what to expect when we rented a slasher movie. And the interesting part though about Girl School Screamers was that the behind the scenes making of the movie is is more interesting than the movie itself in a lot of ways. And of course that's true with a lot of these. And this one is is no different. First of all, when did this come out because Vinegar Syndrome lists it as a 1984 movie. And I think IMDb IMDb lists it as 1985 and uh, Wikipedia has it as 1986. Now as far as I understand, it was actually produced shot and produced in 1984 and it was not released until 1986 when Troma picked it up, changed its title to Girls School Screamers, added some extra gore scenes to make it more marketable for the audience that really wanted slasher films and and then sold it that way, sold it on the VHS market, that, uh, that video store era we were just talking about. And so the director, John P. Finnegan, uh, real interesting, he's in a lot of the extras on this, commentaries and an interview, interview uh, with him. He actually rated the, uh, New York University uh, NYU Film School. And <laughs> just he got all his talent and I think a lot of actors and actresses from the film school so that, you know, it could fit into his budget. So a lot of these people that were involved in, in the movie were just excited because here's a guy who's saying, hey, I am actually going to shoot a real movie with real equipment on 35 millimeter. And if you want to be a part of it, you can be a part of it. I don't have a lot of money, but if you, if, you know, this is a resume builder. And so I think that's how a lot of these guys got their start back in the day on small time, low budget, independent productions. And this movie uh, <laughs> was, was no different. So, uh, Troma agreed to distribute it, but uh, only after they, they added those gore inserts, because what was interesting to me about Finnegan was that he really set out to create a ghost story, a sort of low-key, uh, haunted house sort of mystery ghost story sort of thing, not a violent slasher movie. And so it, it was hard to market, I imagine, in the mid 80s. And so when Troma said, okay, we will pick it up, we'll take it on, but we're going to add some gore. We're gonna add some blood, we're gonna add some guts, we're gonna add a little bit of special effects. And it wasn't much, but it was just enough to make it marketable because then people saw, oh, look at that, uh, look at that monstrous looking thing, as you see on the, slip cover here that that wasn't part of the original the monster looking thing was not part of the original uh, movie as it was shot it was just inserted later as part of the gore stuff it, it kind of fits in it doesn't look out of place I, I suppose if you were watching it and didn't understand it you know you might uh, you might go well that kind of looks it looks like maybe that was added later for some reason but I imagine most people wouldn't have thought that it, in fact they probably thought huh if it's out of place only because there's not a ton of it in the movie because it really is just kind of a ghost story with the, those couple of added added scenes. So one of my favorite, I think my favorite character was the old lady who plays the the head, whatever you call it, head mistress or head sister, if you will, of the girls' school. And she's the one who goes with the girls on this trip and she's sort of babysitting them. And, you know, she just kind of, <laughs> like the first time I saw her, or noticed her in the movie she's sitting at the desk with this kind of smile on her face uh just listening to to what's going on from the the headmaster as he's as he's speaking and uh and i thought oh man how she she's just very cheesy and just seems to be uh having a having fun and what was interesting later on is you watch the special features and you learn that she was actually not an actress just somebody that they knew and they found, they said, hey, you look like you could be uh, right for this part in this movie I'm shooting. And so um, she wound up saying, yeah, that sounds like fun. And she got the part, she got the role. And it is fun to watch that. And to me, that just adds to the fun of these independent productions and the way that they were shot, especially back in the 80s. You know, you just, you find what you can laying around, even actors and actresses, and just stick them into your movie 
when and wherever uh, you, you can. So uh, let's take a look at the vinegar syndrome packaging, as I said, because that's one of the things that they do well to sell these movies to collectors. And so there's the, uh, the front and uh, the back of the package. What does it say there? The finishing school that finished them off. Okay. Open it up. And there's the look at the insert. A little bit different. I imagine that was one of the VHS covers. There's the back. If you want to look at that, these of course are reproduced well with high quality photographs at the Vinegar Syndrome website, vinegarsyndrome.com, which you can check out. Look at the disc. Same art there. And uh, the reversible looks like, uh, you know, probably a different VHS version. I don't know which one's the original, but uh, yeah. So there you have it. That's Girls School Screamers. Do I recommend it? Well, I mean, if you're a, uh, a fan of these boutique labels releasing these forgotten horror movies, then uh, yes, obviously, uh, it's not going to be high up on a lot of your lists because there's there's not a lot of those exploitation elements that people seem to really clamor for, even still today. You know, the violence, the gore, the slasherdom, the nudity, and there's not a lot of that in here. I don't think there's any nudity in this movie, actually, and, and the gore really, truly is some added inserts, uh, inserts from... Uh, from Troma when they got the when they got the movie. I guess I'll read off the special features real quick. And, uh, Twenty seconds of violence, and that <laughs> is the name of this little mini documentary, an extended making of doc featuring interviews with writer, director, producer John Finnegan, editor, assistant director John Rondanella, second assistant camera, second assistant director Bill Pace, actor Peter Cosimano, and sound designer John Hodian. There's a lot of people that they were able to get uh, involved in this extra feature. And the 20 seconds of violence, I think, refers to like the 20 seconds that Troma added into the movie to kind of change the look and feel of the movie for marketing purposes. Uh, commentary track with Finnegan, comment a separate uh, a commentary track with the editor, assistant director, Rondanella, and second assistant camera second assistant director bill pace uh, reversible cover artwork english sdh subtitles so there you have it now you are well schooled well versed on girls school screamers from 1984 or 1985 or 1986 depending on where you get your release info vinegar syndrome has it as 1984 i noticed they usually put the year the movie was produced as, or shot or produced, as opposed to the year it was actually released to the public, which is what you'll usually find in lists and uh, directories and books and things like this. So there you have it. Thanks for joining us again. Pop Retro One at Twitter, Pop Retro One on Instagram. And uh, check out the, if you like uh, what we're doing here, make sure you check out the Patreon page, patreon.com slash Pop Retro. And I'll see you again really, really soon. I promise this time.